for the French team. But just thinking forward to this uh, men's foil competition, is it going to be? Is it going to be the team from USA, or is it going to be? Is it going to be the Italians? Well, here we go. We're going to ride out one last time here in Cairo and crown our last world champion for 2022. And a huge match between world number one, Italy, and world number three, USA. And we'll get our athlete introductions, and then Richard Cruz and I are going to talk about this match for the USA. Chase Emmer, Nick, Nick Itkin, Itkin. Alexander Massialis, and in reserve, it is Garrick Meinhardt. For Italy, Alessio Facconi. Daniele Garazzo, Tommaso Marini, and in reserve, it is Bianchi. And our officiating crew for tonight, Su Sang Won of Korea, Mohamed Ayub Farjani of Tunisia, Tim Bartenhagen of Germany, and Wang Hao Chi of Taipei, our floor judges, our assessors for this gold medal match. Richard, I don't know what to make of this match. You look at the Italian team as we see their team salutes, and they've got world number one, world number three, and world number five coming out onto the piece tonight. They're facing world number seven, world number 15, and world number 19, who is 18 years old. You're right, David. The individual ranks do uh, show that Italy are the favorites, but it, this is the team event. This is not the individual, and you can never tell. Come on, are we having a wager? Okay, yeah. Well, since you're American. Um, who's lived in Britain for 25 years. Um, uh, yeah, but I, I gotta tell you, I don't have any cash on me. Ah, so. Can you? Oh, shall I lend you, you a 50? Lend me right, a 50. there's a 50. Okay, great. Right, put your money down on the table. Well, it's my money. I'm going to win my own money back. Right, I'll go for the Italians. 50 Egyptian pounds on the table from both sides. Well, I guess I'm going for the Americans then, aren't I? I think you have to. Yeah. And I tell you what, it's not a bad shout, but the Italian team, oh, it is a close match. It really is going to be a close one. Well, the, it's Massiellis to open and close for the USA. Tommaso Marini will open for Italy. Daniele Garazzo will close. But the thing is, is that in the semifinal, in the semifinal against France, there was one person that carried the whole team, and that's an 18-year-old kid, Chase Emmer. Yes, I've heard big things about him. And of course, we've got our World Championship silver medalist there, Tommaso Marini. Is he gonna be able to go one further and win the gold medal tonight? Well, it's Mohamed Ferjani to referee our first two legs in this gold medal match. Marini on the attack. We know he's a bit of a bully, isn't he? He likes to take the match to his opponent. Makes for great fencing to watch. See, Alice fought off that attack from Marini. A wonderful little exchange there of blades. And Marini's really keeping the pressure on Massialis. Pushed him right back to his back line. Now, I think Massialis wanted to challenge that, but it's a good idea not to use your videos too early. And that was a, I don't know, 60-40 call, so he decides not to. Point goes to Marini, 2 0. Oh, and those lovely direct lunges from Marini. Yeah, make that 3 0. 
It's quite incredible, isn't it? He's hitting people at Olympic level with a simple direct lunge. And there, there again. There's a saying in combat sports, the simplest things... Are sometimes the best. Sometimes the best. And that's the way to counter it. You've got a parry riposte. Masialis holds his ground, little cart riposte. But isn't, isn't distance somewhat difficult to like, get right when you're fencing somebody like Marini, who is so tall and has such long reach? I think it is quite difficult to judge the distance because also his arms. His arms seem disproportionately big. So that's another factor you have to put in. Well, Masialis. With another one there. Simultaneous, uh, is it? No, yeah, the referee Mohammed is... Yeah, Johnny is going to go to the... Just thinks it's worth a review. Yeah, he's going to have a look of his own volition before he makes this call. I have to say, hats off to the referee. If they don't know, they go and check. And that's the point of the video review. Absolutely. Attack to the right, and Greg Masialis stands up and screams why at the referee. A, a, a US-Italy match with um, Greg Masialis. And Greg Masialis is not happy there. No, he's not. And, and, and with Stefano Cerioni in the box is always a colorful affair. But we've got Chase Emmer coming on for the USA, and it will be Daniele Garazzo for Italy. I have to say, I empathize a little bit there with Greg Masialis, because if there was something in that for Marini, it was just a fraction. So Still early five, days. 5-2, we go into the second. And we'll see what 18-year-old Chase Emmer can do against Italy. He certainly did it against France. Parapos oh. from Emma. And he holds his nerve, only 18 years of age, in the World Championship team final. Typical Garozzo goes on the press, the slow press. Yeah, parry off target. It's amazing how much time Garozzo takes after the parry and the riposte. He just feels the timing well. Takes his time. And now it's attack all the way from the left. There was no stop. And Garazzo asking for a video review, but I dare say that was the attack from the left. I didn't see a pause. Did you see a pause, no, David? No, I didn't. Let's we'll get the replay right here. Yeah, there's no pause after the start, so I think the referee will confirm it. He does. Just like I said earlier, it's like Garozzo's got all the time in the world. He does a parry, he just picks the opening sector of the target, and he reposts. Attack no by Emma. That means if he would have put the point on, it would have been his. But he misses. Uh, same thing. Well, this time... Ayub Fajani just spots a little hesitation in Chase Emma's attack. And that's when Daniela Garozzo takes the initiative. Yeah, if Tim B Bardenhagen, the floor judge, points out that uh, the mask clip on Garozzo had come unstuck. Of course, the... The mask generally still works without the clip, but the clip is just that extra security. Still generally works because it, it, it's in contact with the Lame. Right. right. Just to make sure. With those little tabs. That's right. Oh, lovely close quarters work from Garozzo. Little counter He's parry repost there, really holds it. He was doing that like he had done it before. I think he's done it a few times before, so? hasn't he? Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, now this time, Garotto gets his timing slightly wrong, just brings the elbow back, withdraws the arm a little bit too much, and is timed out. Well, that will take us out of the second. Well, we've got a video review. Still got a video review. Okay. And Greg Masialis is, is up on his yeah, feet. Yeah, yeah, he's in a state of high dudgeon. Well, it's that. <laughs> okay, so call stands. And 10-5, we go to the third five in it for Daniele Garazzo, three for Emmer. Um, he does look impressive, but, but he's going to have a hard time. He's doing very well so far. It's just these little incremental wins that pay dividends in a team match. You notice, you know, Masialis just lost by three points, then by two points, all of a sudden, five points down. These incremental wins are what allow the match to, to creep away. All right, so Itkin on for the USA to face Alessio Ficone. Oh, and that's yeah. a little bit of contact there. Well, a little bit of contact. You see, Ficone's complaining that he had a guard go in the face, of course. I don't think it's anything malicious, but that well, is... It, it, it can win over the left shoulder. Look there. And Ooh. there's where the contact was. Now, will that be a straight red card? I don't think it was anything on purpose or malicious. No. Cherioni just complaining. Guard in the face. Well, Ficone going to the end of the piece. Switching his head wire there. Yeah. Maybe the crocodile clip, or should I say alligator clip, got broken on the point of contact. Okay. Back to action. Oh, lovely car oh. repost from Nick Itkin. And look, the score was still on five. They hadn't put the score up, so the American team noticed it. Oh, lovely, straight out of the blocks. Incredible athleticism. That's what the step, USA step team lunch. needs right now. And it is Su Sang Won on to referee the next two legs. Ficone goes for the shoulder, pressing forwards, but is denied by Itkin. This is a Nick Itkin we did not see in the semi-final against France. And so maybe some more balance is being restored to the uh, USA side. The parry riposte there from Ficone. Still all to play for. Oh, now that's what he wanted to do just before. This time he adjusts. He goes for flank. Lovely flick round the corner to the flank. Beautiful hit. I get the feeling, David, that Nick Itkin is not liking these slow pushing attacks from Ficone. No. It's not allowing him to open up, but now he does. That's what he wants to do. That's where he's very happy. He's happy attacking. Oh, oh Ficone oh. tries the same hit again. And it meets a counter. Itkin did knock Ficone out in the um, 
in the individual eliminations. So they've got some history. They know what to do against one another. Oh. Nick Itkin, he's in two minds. He puts the line out. He then gets cold feet. He brings the line back. But in the meantime, Fakoni launches an attack. Nick Itkin was caught a little bit flat-footed there. Uh, Fakoni off target. Fakoni turns to the arm judges, but they don't raise their arms. Now Fakoni is just one hit away from closing out this third bout against Itkin. Itkin off target. Now they're calling more preparation these days. There's always a danger. If you go to the video, when, once you've been hit in preparation, it's only going to look worse on the slow-mo. So I don't think I would advise that video review. Let's see if we get a replay here. Yeah, I think Fakoni just paused a little bit too much, and then Nick Itkin initiates attack on prep. But let's see if the referees are going to call it. Yep, they stick to their guns. And I think that's a good call. Oh, attack no. It's attack no by Nick Itkin. He goes to the referee to te test, test the foil. Of course, if there's no light on the foil, the point would be annulled. But That's, there was a light on the foil and they hit stand. Unfortunately, yes. So Itkin started the attack. He just misses the target, even though he had the priority. 15-10 to end the third. Five in it for Fakoni. Five for Itkin. And incremental, you say. Incremental, it was a good bout. Five all, no damage done, but of course the Americans need to sort of just edge their way back into this. Well, Ember is back on, and he's facing Tommaso Marini, and I think this will tell us a lot. I think this could be quite a big bout. Ember off target. Now, the question is, was it a was, parry? Was it a mal parry? Did it go through and hit off target? The referee says it did, but Marini thinks it didn't. Let's just see depends. what we can just see. Just depends here. if he got that blade. He got the blade early. I dare say he's in with a shout there of getting it overturned, because he does tap the blade early. And that's right, the referee changes. Marini didn't parry it onto himself, he parried it early. He has the right to repost. And Marini asks for his weapon to be checked. Of course, fences are within their rights to do that. Well, Emmer got the parry and the repost off target. And then a bit of a scrap close in, but no hit scored. So they reset. Oh! oh what a nice attack. Oh, and look, Marini just too long for Emma Chase. Emma looks like he had him, but Marini just steps out of range and hits with a stop hit. But David, you have to say, for 18 years of age... That's, that's some pretty, pretty sharp fencing. That's some sharp fencing, and on that stage, the World Championship final... I spoke to his dad in the lift 
after the uh, after the France match, and he said he just feels really calm. Certainly can work for you. There we are. He's he's getting some hits here. He certainly is. That was Marini's attack that doesn't actually land. So Emma scores with a one light action. Uh, oh, so stop it again. Emma's got to go after him. Emma, chase, chase him. Ah, but not like that. A little bit too early with the attack in the middle of the piece. You have to push him down to the end of the piece a little bit more if you're going to do that against Marini. In the middle of the piece, you'll just be met with the stop hit. 2013, we end the fourth and five in it for Marini. Three for Chase Emmer. And it will be Alexander Massialis on to face Alessio Ficconi. Now seven hits the difference. Now this is a little bit of an interesting one. Alexander Massialis goes to test his foil and there's no light. So is that a yellow card offense? Um, Has he come on the piece with the foil that didn't work? How does this uh, play out now, David? Well, we think? had a situation um, yesterday where uh, Yannick Burrell came on the piece with a faulty weapon, got a yellow card, then came on the piece with another faulty weapon and ended up on red, but no card here, I think. Yeah, we'll have to check that one afterwards with one of the referees. Of course, the way round it is you just start with a faulty weapon and then put your hand up five seconds in and then change it, and of course... That would be permitted. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Puts the line out. The line is withdrawn and it turns into a counter-attack. And this, David, this is I pretty think good stuff. this is going to be a big leg. This is going to be a swing bout, I think, because Masialis is looking pretty sharp here. Lovely counter-attack by Massialis, so that attack by Fagoni is becoming a little bit reckless. Only for the difference. Well, he's been hit with the same, he's been hit with the same hit twice in a row here. That's right, David, those counter-attacks seem quite deadly tonight. Oh, just off target from Massialis. Fakoni tries a counter-attack, but it's off target. So they'll reset that part of the piece where they're standing now. Oh! oh. Alexander Masialis misses with his counter-attack, but then has another go. Little Ramiz in there. Fakoni asks for his weapon to be checked. It works. Point stands. He says, I don't want that one anymore. And a 4-0 run for... Alexander Masialis here in the fifth leg in the gold medal match. The USA has got Garrick Meinhardt in his kit, in the box, but we have not seen him on the piece today. Why do you think that is, David? Do you think he's injured? Uh, well, if it was a really serious injury, then he wouldn't be in his kit. Um, Let's see if they bring him on. We'll see. Now, this time, Faconi adjusts. That little 
micro break has done him some good as he does a cart riposte flick to shoulder and that is his first hit in this leg oh. and again another counter attack by Masialis well, it looked to me like he actually got the parry when he was just going for a counter attack He may well have done. 18-21, three hits in it. But not this time. Faconi adjusts, slows down that preparation and finishes, hand out in front. Attack. Ooh, now a bit of controversy here. A little yeah. bit of controversy. It looked like Ayub Fajani was about to give the hit to the left. Yeah. Attack from the left, he then has a change of heart thinks that Masialis may have hesitated. So they go for a review. Let's have another look. Masialis goes for the blade but doesn't find it. That may be a factor on the video review. What do you think, David? Well, I would like to see it again, but I'm not going to. Ah, no, he changes. Good video review by Alexander Masialis. Three the difference again. There we are. Faconi pushes Masialis to the back, gets him a little bit off balance under pressure, and then launches a counter-attack. Very clever. Oh. Again. A sort of attack remise there by Masialis. So Faconi parries, but can't deliver the riposte, so Masialis has another go. And again, three the difference. And Masialis Perry off target, riposte off target. Masialis comes off to straighten his weapon. Coney off target. Masialis gets the parry, but not the riposte. A little bit too far back, out of range for that riposte to shoulder, so he only gets near the elbow. White light. Oh, lovely. Attack Touche, and then a little disengage. Did you see that little disengage at the end? Just goes round the cart parry. Yeah, and Masiala searching everywhere for the blade. Can't find it. Classical stuff. Attack off target. Nice. Oh, Faconi calls a video review. You see how Masialis, he's using that same kind of style that Chastanay employed a little bit earlier. Yep. We saw in the bronze medal match, just pressing forwards, hand across the body, and then delivers the blade from the cart line. Yeah. Only off target, though. Call stands. Attack off target. And uh, now Masialis asking for a video review. Now, wh what do you make of this one, then? He beats the blade, Masialis Senior yeah. says. He beats yeah. the yeah. blade. It's a late hit, but I suppose technically in the rules of foil fencing, he still has the right to make that riposte. Well, and if there are two lights, I don't see why it shouldn't be attacked from the left. He does beat the blade. Greg Masialis is screaming at the... The referees. And he does change and he it. Does. That's what yeah. I thought. He beats the blade. He has the right to make his riposte. It's late, but it's there. Three the difference.
And Ficotti with the counter will take us out of the fifth, 25, 21, and what was a seven point margin, now four. Five in it for Ficconi, eight for Alexander Masialis, and that was big. That was big for the USA. Yeah, great leg for the USA. They've closed the gap slightly, and now Itkin Gorozzo. Another crucial swing bout. Are you Fajani still refereeing this one? Interesting referee. Did you notice he uh, refereed in Olympics? He then went to an Olympics. And As now a he's back for Tunisia. That's right. Now he's back refereeing again. Interesting uh, career progression. Well, you know, he may start fencing again and go to Paris. You never know. You never know. But he's a good referee. Lovely power repost from Gorozzo again. He just holds that blade, picks that sector of target he's going to finish in, and he's deadly when he gets going. I'm not sure. Now, attack left. Attack left. I think that's the right call. Gorozzo knows it because he doesn't challenge it. Nitkin just a little bit ahead in tempo. Same again. And Fajani has given a tactouche, not counter-attack. Even though there was one light, he still phrases it. And he's given a tactouche. Weapon checked. It works. Point stands. Back to three point margin. Great control of the distance. But then just comes a little bit too close at the end. Itkin hits, closes in cart. And that's a rare miss from Garozzo. Usually he doesn't fall for that. Keeps the preparation a little bit tighter. Oh, now. Uh, Itkin off the piste. An early halt called by the referee. Whilst Garozzo was still taking his riposte, he has the right to take the riposte when Itkin ran past. But of course, there was corps à corps, that means body to body. We use the French language in fencing, so corps à corps. And a yellow card shown to Nick Itkin. Still no problem, but another infringement would mean a red. See, excellent control by Garozzo. Presses forwards, just lands off target. And that's the attack from Garozzo. You can tell that because Nick Itkin turned at the end, so that automatically rules him out. Makes it a counter-attack, a defensive action. Attack good by Garozzo. Oh, this time, Garozzo parries, but Nick Itkin manages, manages to steal that hit. Steals and then just blocks him out. Of course, you're going against the convention when you do that, so you've got to make sure it's one light. Garazzo. Nick Hickin wants the video review, but Greg Masialis advises him against it. So they obviously felt that was a fair call. Attack from Garazzo. Was there a pause? Was there a pause? Well, the referee is going to go to the video. The referees aren't quite sure, so they go and review the video. Yeah, of his own volition. I could see this one going either way, to be honest. God, that's oh. close, isn't it? That's close. You never know, he may call simultaneous if he doesn't want to separate that. That's no, all the way. Attack, Attack good. Right. Now, I dare say that hit should stand because 
Even though Garozzo has obviously been on the receiving end of a bit of core a core, a bit of a collision, I think Nick Itkin hit in one tempo. If you drop your foil, your opponent still gets one go. Oh, and look, Nick Itkin. Look, he drops his foil. I still think Nick Itkin should have the right to repost. Referees go for the review. Okay. The referee said halt. Apre out after halt. And I dare say Grozzo has done well out of that. Well, apart from his, the, his wrist, apart might from the not. wrist, yeah, but hasn't conceded a point. But the wrist, of course. Remember what I said earlier: if you drop your foil, you're yeah. still entitled to parry, but only with the sword arm. Your opponent is allowed to have one go, but unless no more. you're down on your knees, <laughs> clutching your wrist. Yeah, it must have jarred it slightly on the collision. He'll attack pause by Garozzo. Yep, attack left. He'll pause by Garozzo. That's what I saw. I th calls for a video review. And that was a quick look. That's right. That's right, David. Very quick video review. Not much to look at. And now he asked for another video, but he's used his video. And yeah. he's used it unsuccessfully, which means... I no think they both used well past their allotment. Yeah. That's in right. this leg. Of course, the video referee... Well, the referee can go and ask for his own video review if he wishes to, if he's not sure about something, but the fencers cannot request it now. I think Itkin's looking for that, that counter again. Itkin puts the line out, only to be beaten by Garozzo, but Garozzo doesn't finish on target. The preparation, Itkin calls the video, but there's no video left. 30-26 will take us out of the sixth, and five in it for Garozzo, five in it for Nick Itkin and it is Chase Emmer. I get the feeling the Americans wanted a little bit more out of that bout. Yes. Now look at the box. Is Garrick Meinhart warming up? Um, it's hard to I tell, isn't it? Do there is a bit of movement there. Yeah, he's. No, he's just changing uh, Itkin's um, mask clip. So Emmer on to face Faconi. Be great to see Garrick Meinhardt fence, but I don't know if there's an injury that he's carrying. Final action: Perry repost for Coney. The Italians will be looking to make some headway in this bout. Same hit again. This time a little bit too short. Just arrives on the elbow. Oh. Pocconi goes for his riposte over the back, but Emma Chase. Chase Emma has none of it. He steps in with a little counter-attack. So being 18 could actually work in his favour. You know, he's young, he wants to fight. Uh, could also work the other way as well. But he's done very well, hasn't he, for, Absolutely. for a junior fencer? I mean, he basically put the USA team into this match in the semi-final. Yeah, a real star for the future, I think. He picked up a bronze medal in Paris this year. Oh, and then nice. A little tack remise. Faconi finds something on the blade, but doesn't do anything with it. So Emma steals the point. Same again. Faconi finds the blade. He doesn't do anything with it. The momentum was still with Emma. 
Wasn't properly deflected from the target, so he goes and steals the point. Excellent fencing. Oh, oh this time man. a faint disengage on preparation. Well, I said the Italians were going to look to make some headway. Looks like this could be a swing leg for the Americans. I think the USA team ought to keep him. Are any of these Americans from Texas, David? Not to my knowledge. Not to your knowledge, oh, and that's wow. an attack Look at this. around the back. And Faconi has to do something. Well, he's... Wants some cold spray on that wrist? Yeah. Or to, you know, tie his hair back or tie his shoelace <laughs> or something. The doctor comes on to assess the injury. Once the doctor has established there's an injury, then your own team physio and doctor can come on. Well, I would, I would, if I were Alessio Faconi, I would want to stop too if I was, uh, had a 5-2 run against me going on. Very good time to take a little break just to reset things. Fences are allowed a five-minute injury break. It used to be ten minutes, but they reduced it to five. I don't think we're going to get an injury time out here. Just a brief one, but he's killed a few minutes. Let's see if he can reset his concentration. Preparation, yeah. preparation by Emma, and Faconi attacks into it. So, that injury break did its job, I suppose. It's changed the flow of the match slightly. Oh, yes, yeah, beautiful stuff. Faconi draws out Emma. Nice casual parry riposte. Cart riposte, or full riposte, as they say in America. And that injury break was masterful from Faconi. Absolutely reset the momentum of the match. 35-31 takes us out of the seventh. And five in it for Faconi. Five in it for Emmer. And it's Nick Itkin. On uh, to face Tommaso Marini. in our eighth and penultimate leg. I mean, the U.S. got themselves back into the match. The U.S. has done a good job staying in the match, but they've never been in the lead. And with Marini and Garazzo, anchoring here, Yes, yeah. he's going to need something big out of Itkin and Massialis. That's right, the Italians are in the driving seat, but still all to play for. That's not going to help the Americans. <laughs> attack right. That's right, attack. Marini scores. Has a little knock. Maybe from the guard in the chin. He was complaining about his chin, but he's all right. It can parry off target. And again. Now, does that hit stand? Yes, because... Because... Marini hit and then the fall was after. Is it? He didn't hit as he was falling. If he would have hit as he was falling, that's not allowed, but after the action, it's okay. And like I said earlier, you cannot attack Marini at that part of the piece. Even if you're tall like Itkin, better to push him back. Push him to the back line where he's got nowhere to go. Well, he kind of did. <laughs> well, don't listen to me because he just did it and it worked. Yeah, so. it looks to me like Itkin's kind of got his back up here. Yeah. Yeah, that has to be frustrating. Very frustrating. The sheer size of Marini means the power of Post is nowhere near him. And Itkin's not a small man, is he? No. Must be at least six foot three, I think. Oh. 
Uh, video review asked for by Itkin. Initially, Let's see what we see here. There was a lot of blade action in there, wasn't there? I think the referee saw two blade beats. One for Marini. One, well, no. There were three all together, but uh, it's hard, one. Hard one. to call. Will he call simultaneous? No, he stay, sticks to his guns. It's attack from the right. 40-32, and Masialis has a lot to do, especially yeah. as he's up against Daniele Garozzo. Well, five in that for Marini, only one for Nick Etkin, and you can't win a gold medal that way. And it looks like we're not going to see Garrick Meinhardt after all. Okay, Rotsi has got his kit on, kit on now. That's the attack from the left. Well, Garozzo's complaining that Masialis closed him out, but if you fall over at the end, I don't think the referee's going to have any sympathy with you. You've got to hold that body position, correct posture, otherwise it's not an attacking action. Okay, Masialis uses the line. Always a good way to deter the slow press. The referee trying to get them set in the correct place on the piste. Oh, oh, lovely, over the back. Very hard hit to do at such close distance. Close quarters, flicked right round the back. But Masialis is quite good at it. He's good at a few things, isn't he? He can hit from some incredible angles. He's going to need a few more. Counter-attack. Off target. Oh, and heartbreaking for Masialis. He has the priority. Just needs to land the point, but it's wide. He spoons it wide. One light to Garozzo. Not this time. Notice Garozzo's preparation is a little bit too big, so he manages to hit and then turn to avoid the incoming attack. Oh no, he just holds on a little bit too long. Uh, still Masialis' attack. Italy won the European Championships. The USA won the Pan Americans. That's right. It's a clash of the champions, isn't it, David? But only one can win here. Oh, lovely. Same hit again. That little counter-attack is doing the job for Masialis. Starting to bridge the gap, but still six hits in it. Messi Ellis takes his mask off to pull his socks up. Oh, 
Beautiful. That's what That's, Masiata yeah. He's got to keep the pressure on. Just keep pressing forwards. And then, of course, he's got his counter-attack in reserve as well, if well, Garotto comes. Uh, Garotto's mask is conductive. He just checked it. In which case, he has the right to change his mask. Of course, the hit stands. Nothing you can do about that now, but you can change the mask for the rest of the bout. And the Italians, they send a runner into the stands just to find his mask. I think we're going to be a while. Yeah, because he's running the long way around. That's right. They've got to go all the way back to the stands. And this is a this is a big arena. It's a great arena, isn't it? It's the same place for the World Cup, and they've really done great work with the overlay. What do you think, David? A little Arabic lesson whilst we're waiting? Oh, sure. Why not? We don't want any dead air time, do no, we? No, no, no. Give me a right, Arabic lesson. I'll tell you one of my favourite words in Arabic. You ready? Yeah. Nana. Nana. Yeah, do you know what that means? Nana. It means mint. Mint. Mint, yep. Nana. So there you are. If you want a little nana tea, you can have one. Fabulous. What's tea in, in Arabic? Uh, shai. Finjan shai is a cup of tea. So you can have Finjan shai with nana. How many languages are you, are you operational in? <laughs> Well, I'm struggling with English tonight. <laughs> no, you're doing just fine. Right, here we go. Okay, a dry mask. Yeah, so there they test it. Of course, the off-target white light comes on, so the bout resumes. Oh, no, Masialis goes on the hunt. But Garozzo reads it well, sees flick to shoulder. 43-37. And Masiolis, he had to finish that. The tempo was there. And Italy won away from Just the title. Just a little bit lax with the point under the pressure. Carazzo has gone hunting for gold. Lovely Messi pressing Alice, attack. Yeah, Messi Messi Alice says not so fast. That's what he's got to do. He's got to take this match to Garozzo. But he can't make another mistake. Messi Alice puts the line out to try and deter Garozzo. That's one way to do it. Of course, Garozzo just beats the blade and then continues the initiative uh, Grazzo off target test this weapon on Masiala Slame Are we going to have some more action, or is Garazzo going to drag this thing over the line? Oh! oh. Masiala short with the counter-attack. Garazzo goes for the flick around the back, but doesn't land it. And Masiolas worms his way in for a one-light remise. 39-44. Uh, and it's over. That's it. The team from Italy, our 2022 men's foil world champion. It was really one-way traffic to the Italians. I think if Gerrit Meinhardt was in the starting lineup, we would have seen a much different match. We don't know what happened to Gerrit. We're going to have to do some research after this. I can only assume he's injured. Well, at a world championships, when you're starting with the quarterfinals, um, you 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 want to have Garrick Meinhardt in there. You do. I know Garrick's a little bit prone to injury because his style's so explosive. Chase did superbly for an 18-year-old, but I'm afraid it's the Italian team celebrating you, tonight. You know you know what the the USA team is taking home a silver medal from the World Championships. That's not such a bad deal. 
Yeah, of course, look, there's a bit of a change in the team. Racing Bowden's not here. Miles Chamley Watson's not here. It's a slightly different team. <laughs> Actually, Racing Bowden is here. He's uh, he's coaching Yusuro Tibu. But okay, anyway, that's right. He's here, but he's not on the piste. So a slightly different team, but a lot of talent there. Uh, Masialis yeah. and Meinhardt are the older ones in the team. Good future for the youngsters coming through, but it's the Italians tonight celebrating. And As that well man, they should. There's a picture of Mr. Tommaso Marini, silver medalist in the individual, but brings home the gold medal in the team. That's it. Sometimes if you get that silver, you just want to go that one step further.